Thank you. So I want to start my session with briefly explaining the broad context that frames the tremendous opportunity and the purpose behind and of GMG. Less than two weeks ago, the UN said we just passed 8 billion people on the planet. And we're on our way to nine and a half, maybe 10 billion people by 2050. This population growth and, and the massive drive of people into the middle class are driving energy demand very significantly and will continue to do so, such that by 2050, energy demand will be some 40% higher than it was in 2010. But with this demand for energy and other products, come very significant environmental pressures, both on climate and the whole natural world. So to balance those two issues, we very much need more energy and more things, but using less resources to produce those things with very much less negative impact. And we need those changes very soon. Now, graphene being single layers of carbon has been called a wonder product given its unique properties, including its strength, flexibility, conductivity, tensile strength, and ion storage. And so it can help society provide more or less in many, more from less in many and varied areas. We see that graphene has a critical role to play in both helping to provide more of what the growing world wants, while also reducing the negative impacts in meeting those needs. And it can do that now by improving existing products, can also do this in the future by helping to create better products in the future. To be fair though, graphene has been slow to realize its wonder product status across all industries. We at GMG have similarly been slower, seen slower sales than targeted as customers have taken time to build confidence in the benefits of graphene. History tells us though that most industrial changes take some 15 to 20 years to start to mature. Graphene was discovered in 2004 and seems indeed to be similarly following this path, with application acceptance only recently really expanding. But we believe firmly that graphene's time has come, and as does The Economist magazine, magazine, which highlighted just this case in mid this year. We're increasingly confident that through working with knowledgeable large customers, both B2B and through established large-scale distributors, we are approaching notable sales as customers' understanding of the opportunities for graphene applications grow. There are many potential applications of graphene. GMG has determined that our purpose is the application of graphene in the areas of energy saving and energy storage solutions. These are huge markets with significant value to access, both immediately as well as in the future. In addition to this large market opportunity, we also focus on these areas due to the properties of our graphene, which seems well suited to these areas. It also builds on, builds on from our Shell team, many of our team's strengths and Shell's history with our knowledge of industry, energy industry and scale. We're also mindful that energy is a large scale opportunity and accordingly we've set up GMG to be scale ready, not to be retrofitted later. Our systems of HSME, de-risking, funding, etc., all apply a prudent risk and opportunity mindset. Our governance processes are published and we're determined to be transparent as to our life cycle impacts and of, of our operations in future reporting. Our competitive advantage is also built on developing leading technology capabilities in three areas. Firstly, the way we manufacture our graphene, splitting methane gas, CH4, into its elements of carbon, graphene, and hydrogen. This produces high quality graphene given the absence of most sources of impurities. It also provides the ability to tailor our graphene, both providing tremendous, and both of these provide tremendous advantages, we believe. The second technology area of strength is our graphene blending, that is getting graphene into the products that, so they perform better. Graphene is not used by itself, it's used to enhance the properties of other materials, but it is a difficult product to handle in its pure form. So having it in a form that is easy for customers to use and performs reliably is absolutely key, and we have key strong strengths in this area. Thirdly, we are technology capable in developing graphene enhanced products and applications in themselves in the areas of energy saving and battery energy storage. 
These three technologies all individually are important and when combined give us great opportunities for the future. I believe, I believe we've continued to make strong progress in all these areas as Craig will touch on later in more detail. I briefly now touch on our corporate progress. Recognising and supporting the progress we've made in graphene production and battery development, we've moved to larger manufacturing facilities and opened our first battery development centre during this year, last year. We're no longer relying mainly on new, new facilities for our battery development, and this is accelerating our work in this space. The next slide, please, Jeremy. The board has also seen changes with the addition of Emma Fitzgerald, an internationally experienced CEO and leader in energy and water industry, who, by the way, also undertook her studies in surface chemistry and performance materials at Oxford University, a real bonus. Frederick Coetzee also joined us as CFO and director following a number of CFO financial and strategy roles with multinational companies, where he also has experience in fundraising and business monetization. Recogn our, recognizing our need for world-class experienced, knowledgeable, uh, experienced people knowledgeable in the battery space, we've also been very pleased to welcome Bob Galen and Professor Dan Brett as advisors. Among the many interests and achievements are that Bob was the CTO for Cattle, the world's largest silicon uh, lithium iron battery manufacturer. And Dan leads various battery re related labs at the University College London, as well as being the academic founder of the Faraday Institution. Both are providing tremendous technical and development insights for our teams. The board also saw the departure after many years of Chris Ulrich and Robert DeVire. Both were instrumental in the foundation and development of GMG, and together they laid many of the foundations that GMG will build on going forward. I want to thank them both for their significant and exhaustive contributions. Next slide, please, Jeremy. The company has been and remains well-funded. The board is mindful to ensure the company is always sufficiently resourced to undertake and potentially accelerate its plans. The board's also mindful of the volatile economic and market conditions and outlook that may impact potential customers and investment markets. Accordingly, it considered it, it considered it prudent to consider and negotiate to close the recent underwritten offer from Eight Capital. That said, the board limited the amount raised, balancing additional funds now at current terms with targeted potential positive future business developments and associated terms. GMG's success has been and will be based on the people who believe in our purpose and strive every day to make it a reality. Our team has roughly doubled since last year's AGM, and I want to thank them all and those outside GMG who support us for their outstanding efforts and contributions. Finally, looking forward, I continue to see three key priorities for us. Firstly, working with our customer partners to realise the significant opportunities we think our energy saving products offer. This has taken longer than we targeted, but I believe our strategic pivot towards industrial and large established supply chain partners will be successful soon in demonstrating the advantages of our products and seeing higher sales. Next, continuing to move forward in the development of our potential game-changing graphene aluminium batteries is key. We're taking every opportunity to accelerate the development process and will continue to provide further information as and when we have confidence in each set of rep replicable results as we move from the viability prototype phase to the commercial prototype phase and subsequent. We'll also continue to work in parallel with our potential customers to determine whether our current coin cell followed by pouch cell priorities are appropriate or otherwise. Finally, IP development remains key. What's especially clear from our battery work is that graphene quality is the key to application performance and, gra and GMG's graphene is outstanding for our applications. Accordingly, our R&D efforts continue in parallel through the three technology capabilities I talked about earlier, namely graphene production, graphene interproduct, and graphene applications. I'll now hand over to Craig, who will provide more detail as to our progress, and after that, we'll move to Q&A. Craig. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Guy, and thank you, Chair and Board, for your continuing support. I intend to go through the significant progress of the company over the last year since the last AGM, 
in four areas. And then after that, look to talk about the four key activities that GMG will be focusing on in the next year. The first area I want to talk about is the graphene manufacturing, obviously a key component for the company and its competitive advantage uh, for the company going forward. Some significant milestones were achieved this year, and, and these are just some of them. We agreed a collaboration with Wood, one of the largest engineering companies in the world, for designing and delivery of graphene manufacturing expansion projects. And they are right now uh, working with us with our $1.5 million investment in relocation and expansion of our graphene manufacturing plant to our new GMG headquarters in Richlands. Also, we've significantly increased the automation of the graphene manufacturing process. This is allowing us to get growing confidence to scale the process in the future, a very important part of being able to supply the graphene for our products. And then one thing that we should be definitely very happy about is that we announced a growing confidence in the repeatability of the battery grade graphene quality production at scale. This is the key activity that this business unit has been focused on this year. And to announce that uh, in the last press release in, this, in the battery update was a significant milestone. Next slide, please, Jeremy. The next area I want to talk about is the energy savings business. Now, whilst we have um, some revenue come in from Thermal XR and also G Lubricants, we'd obviously want more. And this is being focused in the HVAC and industrial markets. We've also had a number of third-party verified energy savings projects with the application of Thermal XR on HVAC or air conditioning. We also announced a collaboration with one of the largest companies in the world, Rio Tinto, with the use of energy saving products, where we also became the member of Thermal and Fluid Sciences Affiliates Program at Stanford University to better understand how our heat transfer products work. What's interesting is our wider definition of our markets to include now industrial applications in both energy and mining sector, which we have growing confidence that this will provide revenue in the future uh, that will then bring a broader base for support for new products as well. Potential distributors for Thermal XR in very large country areas such as North, North America um, are progressing through qualification and agreement discussions. And also G lubricant performance data and commercial sales are progressing. And finally, but not in any way least, we have acquired the rights for Thermal XR IP to allow full value chain control and future development of the product. Next slide, please, Jeremy. The next area of um, the business I'd like to talk about is the more widely um, proclaimed energy storage business. And this is obviously around our graphene aluminium ion battery that we've successfully licensed from the University of Queensland. We started off the year with a collaboration announcement with Bosch, the engineering construction for battery manufacturing, which we have now progressed through an initial uh, workshop to progress to potential design concepts for our, our battery manufacturing going forward. We obviously constructed the Graphene Aluminium Ion Battery Development Centre, which we progressed through in a very short period of time and then staffed with a very world-class team to then be able to make the batteries that we are now um, progressing and analysing further. We've formed a technical advisory committee with global battery industry leaders who in a lot of ways have got guided us through the joys and also the troubles of battery development, including helping us understand how to announce a 93% increase in energy, in energy density, which I'll come on later. We've also announced a collaboration with Rio Tinto for the use of energy storage products and also the potential for them to supply our aluminium. And we've commissioned our pouch cell equipment in the Battery Development Centre. The largest announcement in this year was the 
increased in battery energy density, which I alluded to earlier, of near 100% up to 300 watt hours per kilogram, and a power density increase up to over 9,000 watts per kilogram. This indeed was a startling outcome as we transferred the IP from University of Queensland over to our battery development team and centre. We're still coming to terms with uh, the outcome of that, but we also believe there is a long way to go and we have a lot more um, energy density to uplift through further R&D. And then whilst all this was happening, we have progressed numerous early stage global leading battery customer opportunities and trying to understand how our battery can help them and also in what phase it could be supplied from us at a time when we can supply them. Jeremy, next slide, please. The, la the last area I want to talk about before I talk about the next milestones focus is around the company corporate team. Um, as our chair has already uh, discussed, we've near doubled our capacity of the GMG team, which is in no uh, way a small thing. This has increased the speed of company maturation to commercialization in all areas of the business. We've definitely also strengthened our executive capability with numerous top hires from relevant industries, including two uh, general managers who've been able to progress the business significantly in their time. GMG was also a founding member of the Australian leading industry body for the Advanced Materials and Battery Council. We launched this only a month ago at the Queensland Parliament House. And some minor notes um, of the finance space before we finish up with just over $1.5 million Australian in the R&D tax rebate, and as well as a near or likely a five, 5 million Canadian bought deal, um, which is being progressed as we speak. Next slide, please, Jeremy. So looking forward, the two slides I have now to present to you is around the four key steps that we'll be focused on in GMG. First and foremost, we must continue to drive our revenue from Thermal XR. And this in the end is all about data, as our chair has already discussed. We're continuing to develop the air conditioning or the HVAC market channels for distributors and direct sales, and also continuing to develop industrial applications for industrial heat exchanger market in the energy and mining industries. Key to this is, fo is focus on data, which is undeniable proof that our products will work in our customers' applications, which can then extend to Huda sales. The second area is obviously continuing to improve and scale our battery graphing production, especially for um, in our new headquarters. This will continue to show our ability to repeatedly supply graphene at the right battery grade required for our high performance battery. Next slide, please, Jeremy. The other two areas of activities that we'll be focusing on in GMG, one is that obviously continuing to work with different customers and industry partners for our battery applications, as well as our battery value chain partnerships these include University of Queensland, Wood, Bosch, and Rio Tinto. We'll obviously continue to deepen our potential application knowledge for the battery and develop potential customer base as well as we go through developing the roadmap technology, uh, ro technology roadmap, as well as our market um, uh, launch plan. The last area we're focusing on of note is that we'll be continuing to optimize the battery development center and testing both coin cells and pouch cell prototypes. We'll continue to review the potential for an investment in a coin cell manufacturing plant in 2023 to potentially be optimal operational in 2024. And then as we are in that space, we'll also be reviewing pouch cell applications and developing our technology roadmap and the most appropriate market outcomes and when that should be brought online as and when we are able to do that. <clears throat> 